Hello everyone, this is Rick and today we are going to discuss about UNESCO World Heritage Sites in India. Now there are many UNESCO World Heritage Sites in India. We will discuss one by one in detail. Hence it is going to be a long presentation. That's why without wasting any time, let's start. At first we have to know what are UNESCO World Heritage Sites. UNESCO as we know is United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. Now they make a list of World Heritage site, Sites under the World Heritage Program which is administered by the UNESCO World Heritage Committee. Now who are there in the World Heritage Committee? This committee is composed of 21 UNESCO member states elected by the General Assembly. The aim of this uh, promotion or to aim or the aim of this uh, strategy to conserve uh, the heritage site is because we need to promote our cultural uniqueness and natural importance to the world. Now let's start with Dhola Vira. India currently has 40 UNESCO World Heritage Sites. And the recently added UNESCO World Heritage Site is Dholavira. It is located in the Kutch district of Gujarat. This is a mature Harappan site which was commercially very important city of the Indus Valley Civilization. There is a three tier settlement that means there is a citadel, a middle town and a lower town, upper town, middle town and a lower town. The urban center of mature Harappan phase had many such sites among them Dholavira is one of the biggest in India. Next up we have Kaziranga National Park. Now this national park is situated in Assam which is famous for the largest number of one horned rhinoceros. The rhinos with one horn are only found in the world in Kaziranga National Park. The other animals are also included here. They, they are elephants, wild buffalo and swamp deer. This is also an important bird area by BirdLife International. Elephant Reserve is also there under the project Elephant. This one important fact of Kaziranga National Park is that it contains the highest density of tigers in the world and so it was made a tiger reserve in 2006. The vegetation here includes a vast expanse of tall elephant grass, marshland and dense tropical moist broadleaf forest. So these are the important points about Kaziranga National Park located in Assam. Next up we have Manas National Park. This is a wildlife sanctuary, a tiger reserve and an elephant reserve and also a biosphere reserve. So Manas National Park functions as a lot of institutions of nature. Close to the Himalayan foothills near the Royal Manas National Park in Bhutan. So this is uh, in very close proximity to our neighboring state of Bhutan. It is known for its rare endemic species. Critically endangered pygmy hog is one of the important animals found here. Endangered uh, species include Assam roof turtle, hispid hare and golden langur. So this was everything about the Manas National Park that we need to know. Now next up we have Keuladeo National Park. Where is it situated? It is situated in the Bharatpur district of western Rajasthan. It is a national park bird sanctuary and a Ra Ramsar wetland site. Now every important wetland site around the world has been conserved under the Ramsar Act. The human made lake is present here, a lake which has been artificially made by humans. It is famous for 364 species of wintering birds which migrate from countries like Afghanistan, Turkmenistan, China and Siberia. Nanda Devi and the Valley of Flowers National Park. Both of them are a, a part of Western Himalayas. As you can guess, this is situated in uh, the northern part of India in close proximity to the Himalayan mountain range. Located in the 
छामोली डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ उत्तराखंड अलोंग द घरवाल हिमालय द फाउना हेयर इंक्लूड्स एशियन ब्लैक बेयर स्नो लेपर्ड हिमालयन ब्राउन बेयर ब्लू शेप विच आर ऑल आइदर वेरी वर्नलेबल और एंडेंजर्ड कंडीशन समर ऑल्सो लाइक ब्राउन बेयर दे आर क्रिटिकली एंडेंजर्ड द नंदा देवी नेशनल पार्क माउंटेन्स हैव रगेड टेरेन सो हियर द माउंटेन्स हैव वेरी रफ टेरेन इट इज ऑल्सो अ बायोस्फियर रिजर्व अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ बर्ड वॉचर्स एवरी हियर कम एज टूरिस्ट टू वॉच द बर्ड्स ओरिंथोलॉजिस्ट दिस इज अ वेरी फेवरेट प्लेस फॉर द ओरिंथोलॉजिस्ट द पीपल हु स्टडी बर्ड्स दे आर लोकेटेड इन बिटवीन झास्कर एंड द ग्रेटर हिमालयन रेंजेस नेक्स्ट अप वी हैव सुंदरबन नेशनल पार्क नाउ दिस इज वर्ल्ड लार्जेस्ट डेल्टा द लार्जेस्ट मैंग्रोव फॉरेस्ट इन द वर्ल्ड इज लोकेटेड इन एन एस्टुअरी सो द गंगा एंड ब्रह्मपुत्र रिवर मिक्सेस टूगेदर एंड फॉर्म्स एन एस्टुअरी विच इज द सुंदरबन डेल्टा दिस अ पार्ट ऑफ दिस डेल्टा इज ऑल्सो इन द कंट्री ऑफ बांग्लादेश यूनेस्को वर्ल्ड हेरिटेज साइट टाइगर रिजर्व नेशनल पार्क एंड अ बायोस्फियर रिजर्व दिस इज द लार्जेस्ट डेल्टा सिस्टम इन द वर्ल्ड द इम्पॉर्टेंट स्पीसीज फाउंड हियर आर रॉयल बेंगाल टाइगर एंड सॉल्ट वॉटर क्रोकोडाइल्स वेस्टर्न घाट्स नाउ दिस इज अ माउंटेन रेंज ऑन द कोस्टल वेस्टर्न कोस्ट ऑफ इंडिया इट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज शायद्री माउंटेन रेंजेस Among the world's most important biodiversity hotspot means lot of species are found here and most of them are endangered. This is located in the states of Kerala, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and Maharashtra mainly the western coast of India. There are subclusters of this mountain range called Agastya Malai, Periyar, Annamalai, Nilgiri, Ta- Talakaveri kudre mukh and shayatri so all these are mountain ranges which are also parts of western ghat now this is not a specific site it ranges throughout the entire western coast of india now greater himalayan great himalayan national park it is located in the kullu region of himachal pradesh why is this important it is characterized by high alpine peaks high meadows and riverine forest so this is one of the most important national parks in india because of the alpine forest alpine trees a trees like pa- pine deodar fir etc many rivers originated from this national park due to melting of glaciers now we all know that himalayas are source of a uh, few of the world's greatest rivers so few of them originate from this national park because of melting of glaciers Next up we have Kanchanjunga National Park. This is situated in Sikkim. It is very important because it is also a biosphere reserve. It is rich in diversity of physical landscapes which include plains, mountains, river valleys and a variety of forest types. It also has a lot of Buddhist monasteries in it. Jammu glacier is located here, located here. It is a very important source of fresh water in the area. The flora includes temperate broadleaf and mixed forest consisting of trees like fir, oaks and willow. All these are alpine coniferous trees. Many medicinal plants and herbs are found here. The fauna includes musk deer, civet, red panda, snow leopard, Himalayan black bear, Himalayan tahir, Himalayan blue sheep, wild dog, Tibetan wild ass, sloth bear and goral. This is the uh, home to the third highest mountain peak in the world which is Kanchanjunga. Now let's come to the artificially made uh, made by humans uh, UNESCO World Heritage Sites and first up we have Mahabadi Temple Complex. This is situated in Gaya district in both Gaya Bihar. This was the place where uh, our Lord Gautam Buddha uh, gained enlightenment. So Emperor Ashoka built the first temple around the Bodhi tree. Bodhi tree is the tree where Lord Buddha gained enlightenment. Present temple is dated between 5th and 6th centuries AD. 
so the temple that ashoka constructed might have not survived but a few uh, rulers after that have constructed temples above it now this is a place of continuous constructions hence throughout ages many uh, many rulers have constructed and reconstructed it it is built of bricks the oldest temple in the subcontinent was mahavadi temple uh, in bodhgaya it was built during the gupta period some parts of the structure are preserved in a museum champaner pravagar so this is situated in panch mahal district of gujarat why is it important it is a late stone age site it is it also has a hill fortress which belongs to ancient hindu rulers the kalika mata temple on top of pravagar hill attracts a large number of devotees it is a hindu place of worship this site is the only complete islamic pre mughal city so before mughals this was the only complete islamic city hampi now hampi is famous for its stone art located on the bank of river tungabhadra in karnataka hampi is located in karnataka it is it was the seat of vijayanagara empire the remains of vijayanagara empire are found here travelers between the 14th and 16th centuries have mentioned this place in their biographies or in their travelogues virupaksha temple and other several monuments are here virupaksha temple is one of the most famous temple in hampi vittala temple is also known for its musical pillars the pillars of this temple make make sounds when it is struck pattadakal what is pattadakal it is a complex it is a temple complex that contain hindu and jain temples it is located in karnataka virupaksha temple built in 740 by queen lokmana devi is a very famous temple here uh, why did she build it she built it in the honor of the victory of her husband vikramaditya the uh, over a pallava ruler so vikram vikramaditya to uh, who was the husband of queen loka mahadevi uh, defeated a pallava ruler and to mark that victory uh, his queen built this temple in 740 ad it is a combination of temples built by the chalukya dynasty in the 6th and 8th centuries at aihol badami and pattadakal the temples represent a fusion of nagara and dravida style so nagara is the north indian architectural form and dravida is the south indian architecture of making temples so this uh, pattadakal is a fusion of both nagara and dravida styles within the heritage complex what is there eight temples dedicated to lord shiva the ninth saivite sanctuary and called papanath temple and a jaina temple so there are eight temples dedicated to shiva the ninth saivite sanctuary is here called papanath temple and the jaina temple now sanchi sanchi is one of the earliest buddhist stupas it is located in madhya pradesh the monument is dated around the second century bc so the first uh, monument the first form of sanchi stupa has been made by emperor ashoka uh, in during the mauryan period the buddhist religious site and uh, it is a buddhist religious site and remained active till 12th century even still now it is a place of worship of the buddhist religion number of monolithic pillars temples and monasteries uh, in different states of preservation has found here the gate that you see in the picture is called torana it is the entrance to the sachi temple one such torana has been broken and a few of it has been smuggled to london museum so few, uh, most of the relics of the sanchi stupa original relics are not present there vimbetka rocks shelters now this is one of the earliest unesco world heritage sites in indian subcontinent why because it uh, contains mesolithic rock art 
इट इज लोकेटेड इन द फूट हिल्स ऑफ विंदेयन रेंज इन मध्य प्रदेश इन द विंदेयन रेंज शैंडस्टोन सेल्टर्स आर देयर एक्सटेंडेड ओवर एन एरिया ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड एकर्स सो इट इज अूज कॉम्प्लेक्स ऑफ रॉक शेल्टर्स वेद द मेसोलॉथिक पीपल हैव प्रोजेक्टेड देयर आर्ट्स हंटिंग सीन्स डिपिक्शन ऑफ हंटिंग सीन्स आर द मोस्ट कॉमन हियर शेल्टर्स हैव पेंटिंग्स डेटेड फ्रॉम पैलियोलिथिक टू नियोलिथिक टाइम्स मोस्ट ऑफ द पेंटिंग्स हैव बीन डन ड्यूरिंग द मेसोलिथिक पीरियड villages surrounding them reflect the tradition displayed in the rock paintings so in rock paintings uh, celebration has been shown hunting scenes has been shown and the villages around that area even today continue those kind of tradition so it is an important uh, area for the study of ethnographic archaeology khajuraho temples now these are the complex uh, temple complex built by the chandela dynasty monuments belonging to hindu and jain religions are found here of the 85 temples built only 22 have survived including the khandariya temple now khandariya temple is dedicated to lord mahadev it is also called khandariya mahadeva temple temples are famous for their nagara style of architecture which is north indian style of architecture and their erotic sculptures next up we have ajanta caves now this is one of the most famous rock cut architecture around the world why because there are more than 30 caves in the area it is located in maharashtra it is on the banks of waghora river these are buddhist caves all the caves are mainly buddhist caves and there are two phases two phases of building ajanta caves the first phase was from 2nd century bc and the second phase was from 5th to 6th centuries ad of the gupta period uh, in the first phase uh, mainly the satavahanas contributed to the building of ajanta caves depiction of richly decorated paintings and frescoes similar to the shrigriha paintings in sri lanka now shrigriha is the capital of sri lanka old capital of sri lanka sorry it is the ancient capital of sri lanka similar paintings have been found in that place also now there are many famous buddhist uh, uh, buddhist architectural features and also buddhist paintings found in ajanta caves like bodhi shapta padma bani elora caves now this is another famous example of rock cut architecture in maharashtra it is located in the aurangabad district of maharashtra it is a cultural mix of all three religions the ancient religions uh, buddhism hinduism and jainism structures have been carved in basalt rocks and most of the structures are monolithic means carved for out of a single rock the kailasna temple is the most famous and admired it was built by krishna one of the rashtrakuta dynasty structures are dated from 600 to 1000 ad now kailasna temple is considered to be one of the wonders of the world because uh, even by using modern technology it is hard to imagine creating a temple like that elephanta caves this is also in maharashtra it is a few kilometers away from the coast of mumbai it is a group of caves lo uh, located in the elephanta island or gharapuri the islands are located near the western coast of india in the arabian sea so if you go from mumbai a few kilometers on a boat you will find the elephanta islands it consists of two groups of caves the first group consists of hindu caves and the second group consists of buddhist caves hindu caves have sculptures of shiva mainly the sculptures of shivas are present on the hindu caves caves are cut in basalt formation just like elora elephanta caves have also been carved out of basalt rocks konark sun temple now this is one of the most important places of tourist destination in orissa 
it have it was built in 13th century ad also known as black pagoda this temple has been popularly called as black pagoda located on the east coast of bay of bengal in mahanadi delta mahanadi is one of the lifelines of odisha state this has been present uh, konark sun temple is present in puri district of odisha it was built in form of a chariot of surya with 24 wheels heavily decorated uh, with stone carving six horses are shown pulling the chariot now most of the te temple has been broken lately because of na natural causes and also because of invaders but uh, it exists and the wheels function as sun dials also means you can uh, the loc uh, the location of sun determines the time constructed during uh, constructed during the reign of king narasimha deva of the eastern ganga dynasty it was constructed using sandstone jantar mantar now this this is a uh, astronomical observatory site built by maharaja sawai jai singh he built five such things he built five such structures at delhi jaipur ujjain mathura and varanasi now this is a quite advanced structure considering the time period in which it was made it is an astronomical observatory means you can observe uh, the sun moon stars and cosmic features from this place jaipur observatory is best preserved it has a number of astronomical observation instruments built in masonry so this is quite advanced uh, this was a quite advanced construction uh, on its contemporary time now chola temples cholas were the rulers Uh, in south india they invaded southeast asia and they were one of the most prominent dynasties of ancient india they constructed huge architectural features all this have been compiled into chola temples under unesco world heritage sites now the first important chola temple is brihadeshwara temple in tanjavur tanjore was the capital of raja raja chola so uh, he was a devotee of lord shiva and here in tanjore brihadeshwara temple is a seat of shiva power it was built by raja raja chola it was completed in 1010 ad vimana vimana means the upward projection the vimana rises to a height of 100 feet which is one of the largest in south india it is uh, it has a monolithic nandi having a height of about 13 feet and and at its entrance so at the entrance of this temple there is a sculpture of Man uh, nandi uh, who was a devotee of lord shiva and that sculpture has a height of 13 feet the entire temple structure is made out of granite the temple has chola uh, paintings all around this sanctum means garbhagriha the internal section of temple where lord shiva where the idol of lord shiva is kept there it is decorated with chola paintings and the second one is brihadeshwara temple at gangai konda cholapuram now this was built by rajendra chola rajendra chola was the son of raja raja chola he made a new capital in gangai konda cholapuram he built another vihadeshwara temple quite similar to the uh, last one it was completed in 1035 ad it is similar to brihadeshwara temple in tanjavur in architecture and design it has a 53 meter high vimana which is pointed upward it is in contrast with the straight vimana at tanjavur so in uh, tanjavur vihadeshwara temple the vimana is straight whereas in gangai konda cholapuram vihadeshwara temple the vimana is pointed upward aidaveteshwara temple at dasaruram darasuram so aidave aidaveteshwara temple at darasuram is another important chola temple it was constructed by raja raja chola 2 
It has a nearly 80 feet high vimana. The temple is dedicated to Lord Shiva who is worshipped as Aidavateshwara. Mahabalipuram. Mahabalipuram is one of the important temple complex of Hindu religion in South India. It was constructed during the time of Pallava rulers. Most important uh, buildings of Mahabalipuram was built during the reign of Mahindra Varman who was also known as Mamalla. And hence this place is also called Mamallapuram. The town has approximately 40 monuments including the largest open air relief panel in the world. Now what is this relief panel? Uh, many the monuments are inscribed here means the monuments are cut deep into rocks. Ratha temples are important feature of this uh, temple complex. Now there are I think uh, Ratha temples on each of the five Pandavas that is Yudhishthira, Vima, Arjuna, Nakul and Shahadev. And also there is a Ratha temple dedicated to Draupadi. The Mandavas have Varaha cave temple. Open air panel descent of the Ganges has been shown as Arjuna's penance. So in the open air panel there is descent of Ganges from the heaven shown with Bhagirath carrying, guiding the Ganges uh, into the earth. The short temple with thousands of scriptures and sculptures are shown praising Lord Shiva. Thiruka Damalai which is a temple dedicated to Lord Vishnu. Next up we have the hill forts of Rajputs. Now there, uh, there are lot of hill forts con constructed by the Rajput rulers on the Aravalli mountain range. We will go through them, we will go through the important ones one by one. They are a group of forts located on the Aravalli mountain. They represent Rajput military hill architecture typology, a style that makes use of terrain uh, defensive properties. So all these forts, they were not like palace of the kings. Each fort was like an entire city. Hence, it was huge in structure and had all the defensive properties. So entire population of the state used to reside in the forts. They enclose large areas and often complete villages within them are present. The Chittorgarh fort, fort. Now Chittorgarh fort is one of the most famous fort because it served as the capital of Mewar. It was captured by Mughal Empire, Emperor Akbar in 1568. This is the largest fort in Rajasthan. Kumbhalgarh fort. It was built by Rana Kumbha during the 15th century. Maharana Pratap was born here. The total wall length of this fort is 38 km, which is the second largest wall after the Great Wall of China. Ranthambar Fort lies within the Ranthambar National Park, is also known for the valor and glory of Hammadev of the Chauhan dynasty. So there, uh, there was a ruler called Hammad Dev of the Chauhan dynasty. He used to reside in this fort. Gargaon, Gagron Fort. Gagron Fort in Jhalawad district of Rajasthan is situated on the hill and also has a water conservation structure. Now Rajasthan as we know is a place filled with water scarcity. There it is all around this place uh, there is thar desert so the need for conservation of water was very much important hence uh, this gargron fort had water conservation feature amber fort example of hindu architectural style it was constructed using red sandstone and marble it is a four story building with a courtyard at each level it consists of Amber Palace and Jaigar Fort which is connected by an underground passage. So all these constructions, all these forts all around Rajasthan had very complex designs which was quite advanced given to the time period they belonged to. Jaisalmer Fort. The fort was built in 1556 by Rawal Jaisal, a Rajput king 
fort is located in the third desert on a hill called trikuta so this fort jaisalmer fort is located on trikuta hill rani ki vav now this is an important step well construction in gujarat it uh, it is located in patan in gujarat known for its detailed sculptures and its large size so this was a place where there was scarcity of water hence a step well was constructed more than 500 sculptures of gods and goddesses are found all around the walls of this step well the most structures are in devotion to vishnu in form of 10 avatars so vishnu has 10 incarnations so most of these sculptures are dedicated to the 10 incarnations of vishnu sculptures also include nag kanya who was considered an apshara showcasing 16 different styles of makeup to look more attractive called shola singar shola in hindi or in sanskrit means 16 and also recently it has been discovered that rani ki vav is not only a step well but some historians or archaeologists also predicted to be a temple which has been constructed upside down into the ground not above the ground nalanda nalanda is one of the most important seat of educational institution in the ancient indian timeline it consists of archaeological remains of an ancient educational institution nalanda university is said to flourish from the 3rd century bc to 13th century ce throughout ages many rulers have reconstructed it and modified it according to the needs of the time different structures found in the site include viharas stupas shrines and important artworks in clay metal and stone bakhtiyar khilji one of the islamic invaders destroyed it in 1202 ce in 1202 ad the picture you see here is of is the main building of the nalanda library now jaipur city this uh, this does not have any specific monument but the entire city constructed by maharaja sawai jai singh in 1700s this entire city is considered to be unesco world heritage site the planning and architecture of the city is uh, unique because it has Isla islamic hindu and western elements in it the iconic places and structures in the city include the amber fort and palace bazaars of jaipur which are uh, important cultural destinations also uh, has johari bazaar and bappu bazaar hawa mahal is one of the important feature of and uh, of jaipur city and also a major tourist destination govind dev ji temple nahargarh fort and the uh, jaipur this entire city complex is called city of palaces because it has numerous royal structures here and there ahmedabad city now why is ahmedabad city important this city was founded uh, by sultan ahmed shah in 15th century ad this city is considered to be a very secular city in medieval india it is important because it has structures uh, like mosque temples traditional houses and also water harvesting structures where fresh water can be stored for later use the city has religious institutions which belong to hinduism christianity zoroastrianism islam jainism and buddhism which makes it a multi religious city so this is one of the important feature of ahmedabad city is that it has a very secular structure now ramappa temple ramappa temple is one of the important temple of the kakatiya dynasty it has been con uh, constructed by the kakatiya rulers in 13th century ad it is located in palampet village of the telangana state it is a shiva temple 
the unique features of this temple are it is a multi storied pyramidal structure pyramidal structure means as you have seen in uh, great pyramids of giza it has four sides uh, which project into a triangular form the sculptures include a uh, depiction of regional dance forms pillars and beams are very much decorated stone architecture is one of the most important feature of ramappa temple the lightweight bricks are used in this constructions next up we have the kutub minar complex now this is one of the most popular uh, tourist destination sites of medieval india early medieval india the red sandstone tower uh, which is known as kutub minar is 72.5 meter in height this is the second uh, second uh, highest minaret constructed in india it is dedicated to khwaja kutubuddin bakhtiyar kaki who was a famous sufi saint at the time it was built at the beginning of 13th century ad alai darwaza Uh, is an important feature in the kutub minar complex alai minar is also present there kubat uh, ul islam mosque is there tomb of iltutmish uh, a ruler of delhi sultanate uh, he is has also been buried in the kutub minar complex it also has an iron pillar an iron pillar which was transported here later the structures may have been made in the remains upon the remains of hindu and jain temples the iron pillar has inscriptions in sanskrit belonging to chandragupta 2 period which is in uh, 4th century ad from the gupta period the works uh, of uh, building this uh, entire complex was started by uh, delhi sultanate ruler kutubuddin aibak in 1192 ad and wo- it was completed by uh, iltutmish who succeeded kutubuddin aibak now red fort red fort is one of the most important icons iconic structure of mughal india it was built by emperor shah jahan uh, as a part of his new capital city shah janabad before this fatehpur sikri was the capital of the mughals a prominent example of indo islamic architecture so shah jahan is famous for remarkable constructions and one of the most prominent constructions done by him is the red fort the planning and design of this complex in a geometrical grid plan grid plan with pavilion structures was the precursor of several monuments which were built later in Rajasthan Delhi and Agra so the design of this monument functioned as a guide to several monuments which were built later in Rajasthan Delhi and Agra it is adjacent to Salimgarh fort uh, on its north built by Islam Shah Suri uh, which was uh, who was the ruler before uh, Akbar and after Humayun in uh, 1546 and is now a part of red fort complex other important constructions in this areas are uh, diwane aam diwane khas neher e behisht moti masjid this moti masjid was built by emperor aurangzeb and diwane aam and diwane khas are forms of mughal courts so all these are present on the red fort complex next up we have agra fort This is also known as the Red Fort of Agra because it was constructed on red sandstone. Uh, so it is located on the banks of River Yamuna. It is surrounded by palaces, towers, mosques, and that were built from 16th century onwards uh, till the early 18th century. The most important structures within this fort complex are Khas Mahal, Shish Mahal. Musamman Burj and octagonal tower Diwane Khas Diwane Aam Mosque is made up of white marble The structures are examples of Indo-Islamic architecture If you have read history you will know that uh, Shah Jahan spent most of his later years in this Agra fort He was imprisoned by his son Aurangzeb Fatehpur Sikri This was built by 
uh, Emperor Akbar in 16th century as his new capital city. For nearly a decade, it served as the capital of Mughal Empire before it was shifted to Lahore because of severe water crisis in northwest India. Akbar decided to construct it in 1571 on the same site because uh, a famous Sufi saint Salim Chisti predicted that Jahangir will be born here. Jahangir will take birth in this place. Hence, Akbar decided to construct it in 1571. Structures are built in Mughal architectural style. Important structures here include the Jama Masjid, which is one of the largest mosque in India. It is very much important seat of Islamic uh, worship. Buland Darwaza is another important feature. It was uh, done, it was construct, uh, constructed in order to celebrate the victory of Akbar. Panch Mahal is another important feature. Tomb of Selim Chisti, who is a famous Sufi saint, is uh, in Fatehpur Shikri. English traveler Ralph Fitch considered uh, this city in 1585 to be more populous than the London the capital of British Empire. Now, uh, London was one of the most important city in Europe at that time. And Ralph Fitch said that this city was even more populous. It had more people than London. Its planning style became an inspiration for the design of Shah Jahanabad. Shah Jahanabad was a capital city constructed by Shah Jahan. So, Fatehpur Shikri served as an inspiration for the construction of Shah Jahanabad. Taj Mahal. Now, Taj Mahal is one of the most important uh, architectural feature of the Indian subcontinent. It is a mausoleum and is considered to be one of the seven wonders of the world. In memory of his wife, Begum Mamtaj Mahal, Empress Shah Jahan constructed this structure. The construction is done using white marble in Mughal architectural style. The architect was Vostad Ahmed Lahori. Now his uh, right hand, index finger and the thumb was chopped off so that he uh, wouldn't be able to construct any replica of Taj Mahal. The tomb uh, has an octagonal layout means it has eight sides. The tomb has eight sides. The calligraphic inscriptions Petra Dura and Arabesques add to its beauty. So all this makes Taj Mahal one of the most important tourist destination in India and also one of the most popular monument in the whole world. Now Victorian Gothic and Art Decos of Mumbai popularly known as Church Gate area of Mumbai. Now this is an entire area where we find Victorian Gothic structures. Most of these structures were built in 1800 by Indians or Britishers. During the colonial period, all these structures were built. One of the most important is the Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus Railway Station, which is the headquarter of Western Railway presently. Bombay High Court, Mahatma Jyotibai Phule Mandalay, also known as uh, Crawford Market. Crawford Market is an area in Churchgate which has Victorian Gothic architectural features. Municipal Corporation Building of Mumbai, Raja Bai Clock Tower. All these are important for its design in Victorian Gothic style. The Mountain Railways of India. Now popularly known as Toy Train, these railways are there in Darjeeling Himalayan Railway, Nilgiri Mountain Railway and Kalka Shimla Railway. All these are railway lines important for tourist uh, destination and uh, tourists can get into these trains and survey the area on the perspective of natura natural beauty. These were built during the colonial period by the British government. Uh, other two mountain rails of India uh, are very important, but they are not yet a part of UNESCO World Heritage Site. These include Nilgiri Mountain Railway in South India and Mathiran Railway in Maharashtra. So these two are also important mountain railways, very popular, but they are not yet in the list of UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Now churches of Goa. 
why is this important because it was built in 16th and 18th centuries by portuguese who ruled uh, goa during this time so uh, vasco da gama came to india in 15th century ad after coming to india goa became one of the most important places to propagate christianity in whole of asia hence the churches in goa are very old and has a typical portuguese design monuments here are ma mainly present in the former capital of vela goa or old goa basilica of bom jesus known for housing the remains of saint francis xavier saint francis xavier was one of the most important saints in christianity his remains are housed in the basilica of bom jesus only some of the original monuments have survived and they are saint catherine's chapel saint francis of assisi church basilica of bom jesus church of saint cajetan and its cemetery church of our lady of rosary church of saint augustine structures are built using laterite rocks and lime plasters these are very important and beautiful churches of goa now architectural sites of le corbusier le corbusier was one of the famous architect of this area of of this modern period he constructed a lot of architectural buildings which are significant on their own rights uh, throughout many countries and all of those sites are uh, rated under unesco world heritage sites now it consists of different works of le corbusier it includes 17 transnational sites located across seven countries so he constructed many sites across seven countries and all of them are considered to be unesco world heritage sites in india we have the chandigarh capital complex located in sector 1 of chandigarh city in india so this was everything about the 40 most important united nations world heritage sites uh, in india uh, hope you like liked it this video has been very long so thank you for your patience if you have watched this video this information in depth will help you in exams like uh, upsc and other competitive exams and also you can go through my channel if you are interested in history in general i have very limited resource with that i have tried to make the video as interesting as possible so please support me thank you